Hi, this is your host Aptin Bhartia and welcome to our yearly video production series. And today we have with us Stephen Frasetti, field CTO at Durantis. Stephen, it's great to have you on the show. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Quickly remind our viewers, what is Mirantis all about? So Mirantis is an open source company uh, that has, uh, that provides support and consulting to many large organizations globally. Thank you. Uh, now it's time for you to grab your crystal ball and share your predictions with us. As we come into 2025, uh, a few predictions that I see within the industry based on conversations with our customers and and where the market seems to be going. Uh, the first of which is uh, seeing the rise of composable platforms and clients recognizing the need for vendor flexibility. Um, we're seeing a lot of customers right now that are shifting towards those composable platforms where they're increasingly recognizing the importance of being flexible within the technologies they choose within their stack. Uh, the focus on flexibility and integration, I feel that's going to continue uh, throughout 2025 and on, and that's going to shape purchasing decisions as we move through the years. Um, the ability to take best of breed technologies is really enabling businesses to run more effectively, more efficiently, and avoid the pitfalls of the past where they fell into you know, significant tech debt. Uh, in addition to that, we're seeing, you know, especially with the uh, you know, last few months acquisitions of multiple companies, we're seeing that organizations are moving forward with converged workloads um, going through their businesses, being able to run not only their virtual machines, but containers, they no longer need to run them in separate environments. I mean, now we're seeing some cohabitation where they're running both of these type of workloads and microservices, as well as some monolithic legacy applications on the same platforms. And this, this will reduce operational complex and complexity significantly. Uh, we finally have reached a point in the market where the migration tools have now made it easier to move the workloads between VMs and containers, and that's opening the door for a more unified, more efficient infrastructure management. And with that, I see that Kubernetes is going to play an even more central role in 2025. Uh, Kubernetes has reached that maturity level where it truly now is the cross-platform common control plane, and that's going to have a massive impact on how organizations manage their workloads. Doesn't matter if they're running on-premise, in a hyperscale or public cloud, private cloud, or specifically at the edge. Uh, businesses are now able to use Kubernetes and will continue to use Kubernetes as that unifying layer to orchestrate their applications. Uh, in one of the other predictions that I see moving into 2025 is around uh, optimizing AI and AI at the edge specifically. Um, we're seeing, or at least I predict, that we're going to see the adoption of smaller, more optimized AI models, more point solution AI models um, that can handle real-time data decision-making for organizations. Uh, this right there will reduce the resource overhead associated with traditional uh, AI and ML workloads, large language models, and will drive more efficiency and cost savings for businesses. Uh, being able to uh, do that real-time processing and decision-making at the edge, I believe this, shift, this will shift traction very quickly as AI-powered devices will proliferate edge-based computing and that'll become more necessary than ever between IoT and many other organizations that are seeing it as a necessity. Thank you for sharing these predictions. What kind of challenges you see are you know, in front of us this year? Uh, I think moving into 2025, the major challenges we're gonna see are around cost optimization. Uh, the ability and simpli the simplification of running in the hyperscaler clouds or running the large language models that are necessary uh, have a significant financial impact. And I think organizations are gonna have to prioritize their budgets for these uh, type of initiatives, which are necessary at this point. 
So cost optimization is going to be the biggest challenge, identifying the right workloads in the right location um, that's going to provide the largest return on investment for these organizations. In addition to that, the challenge is going to be on resource. It's going to be on resources, both from an infrastructure standpoint and on a um, knowledge standpoint, having the ability and having the right uh, team with the expertise necessary to run these models and run these workloads in the right location is going to be paramount. I think that's going to be the, uh, the two biggest challenges we see in 2025. Now, there are a lot of things that we'd love to see happen, but you know for sure they won't happen. What are those? <laughs> the things that, uh, that I'm pretty sure are not going to happen. I, I, at this point, I think what we're not going to see is we're not going to see a return to uh, organizations sticking with an individual stack anymore. I think that's going to be the biggest thing. A lot of uh, colleagues of mine would like to see you know, a standardization in the technology stack, and I don't see that happening moving forward. Um, I, I, I don't believe that is what we're going to see. If you look at these predictions and the challenges that you mentioned, what is going to be the focus of Mirantis this year? So Mirantis' focus this year is on continuing to support our enterprise clients. That's the biggest thing, continuing to support the open source community. Um, and with that, we've made a couple of recent announcements um, and projects to the open source community. Um, one of them being that we recently announced uh, Mirantis Raccoon. That's a new open project with a significant step to uh, providing additional benefits for OpenStack for Kubernetes, our MOSC uh, project. Uh, Raccoon is a Kubernetes controller that serves as the central component of MOSC, uh, focusing on simplifying complex operational tasks. Um, and second, and uh, the, the biggest release that we've just put out is um, we have released uh, Cordon. Uh, it's the first open source distributed container management environment, DCME, um, that provides a single control point for cloud native applications, regardless of location or infrastructure, whether it be on-prem, public cloud, or at the edge. Uh, being able to manage those Kubernetes clusters on any infrastructure, uh, Cordant makes it easy for platform engineers specifically to create customized IDPs, um, internal developer platforms, um, and Cordon architecture, as I predict, um, takes advantage of that composable, uh, composability so that the platform engineers can easily customize to their specific business requirements and standardize deployment templates to speed implementation. Stefan, thank you so much for joining me today and share these predictions with us. And as usual, I would love to have you folks back on the show. Thank you. Thank you.